Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so welcome to the NIFJ Twitch channel. My name is Adam. Uh, today we'll be carrying on from last week's session on building a web application with uh, NIFJ and TypeScript. So we ended last week's session with a module that given some NIFJ uh, connection configuration would create an instance of the NIFJ driver and then provide a service that we could inject into other services to provide an easy way to interact with NIFJ. So we then registered that module with the app module which then allowed us to inject the NFJ service into our uh, default app service. We then used the read method on that service to query NFJ to get a count of the nodes in the database and then return that number to the user. If you're watching back this session on YouTube, then the code for last week's session along with this week's will be available up on GitHub at the, the link on screen. Uh, so feel free to fork the repository or if there are any features that you'd like to see built as part of this series, then feel free to create an issue there. So the results of the poll are in, uh, and the, the winner was a subscription or software as a service site. Uh, so for the remainder of, of this series, I'll be building a project on our fictional client um, who we will call Neoflix. So Neoflix is a video streaming service that allows users to buy monthly subscriptions to film or TV shows. The users can purchase packages uh, which provide access to curated list of content. And all the content that they provide is categorized by type, language, and genre. So in today's session, uh, we'll be looking at how to best model the, the data uh, to fit Neofix as a use case. Uh, so Neofix have been receiving a lot of complaints recently from the, the Swindon area uh, about their recommendations on their homepage. Uh, so they'd like to migrate over to Neo4j in order to improve those recommendations uh, and improve the feedback they get from customers. But before that, let's take a step back and look at how we can derive a model from the data that they provided from their existing system. But one of the most simplest and common sense approaches uh, that I've seen is to extract nouns and verbs from problem statements or user stories. Uh, so this technique was best put by Dom Davis back in 2017 at GraphConnect in London. And uh, this is probably still my favorite presentation on the subject. Uh, but by using this method, it means that you use a ubiquitous language or uh, like a, a common language which is shared between everyone uh, in the business. So this ensures that there's no technical debt introduced during the development stage and that anybody looking at the data can quickly understand uh, what things are. So if we take a step back to the previous description, we can use this text to extract uh, frequently used terms. So the nouns highlighted here in blue uh, become node labels, so descriptive words to describe what an individual node represents. Uh, so for example, we can see a, a user here a subscription, a package, uh, and a video. And then we can extract relationships from the verb, so the, the doing words. So a user will buy a subscription, and then a uh, subscription is for a package, and then a package will provide access to certain content. There's no real art to deriving the properties from a statement. Uh, so these are more heavily driven by the use case. So let's take a look at the data that we have available. So searching through uh, Kaggle, I found this data set, which I think we'll use uh, for the project. Uh, so this is provided by a site called MovieLens. Uh, so it's uploaded a few years ago, but it's still a very comprehensive data set, which I think the data is in CSV format. So for anyone who's not seen this statement before, this is load CSV. Um, so this will load a CSV file uh, into memory from a uh, either file or from the HTTP, HTTPS location. Uh, and assign it to a variable of row inside a Cypher query. Uh, once that's loaded then we can then use the power of Cypher to import the data into Neo4j. So I've already gone and downloaded and extracted this uh, bundle. And what we can do now is we can use load CSV to look into the files and see uh, see what content they have. Uh, so for example, uh, if we look at the, the movie's metadata file, I can uh, load CSV. Uh, with headers because the first row is a header file from movies metadata.csv and I assign that to a variable of row and if I say return count star then this will give me a count of all the rows in there so that there are 45,463 rows. If for example I take the first row, so return row limit one, I should be able to see the information that's held on here. So by default, when you load data and using load CSV, everything is cast as a string. Um, so what you need to do if you need something other than a string 
then uh, you would have to cast that using either a cipher function or using APOC. Uh, so for example, we have things like the overview, uh, the original title, uh, the original language, IMDB ID, those are all strings, so those are fine. Uh, but you can see there are things like this uh, runtime um, property, which it looks like a float. Um, the release is looks like an integer there, but it's a, um, a string. Uh, and this is kind of a, a strange data set. So um, it looks like this, this data set's come out of a document store. Um, so there are certain values in this CSV which are encoded up as JSON. So what we can do to convert those is we can use a, an APOC function. Uh, so if I call apoc.help uh, with a value of uh, JSON, then we're looking for um, apoc dot convert dot get json property or get json map so depending on the uh, the data we need one of these two uh, what this will do is it will take the string uh, and then it will serialize it into um, into a map uh, which cypher understands so if i take one of the values uh, so for example if i take the genres and then in this case it's a, a list so we'll use apoc.convert dot from json list and then the value uh, so you can see this has now been turned into a, a cipher list with cipher maps inside so we can then use information from that json object to populate the graph so if i take this uh, query that i've written earlier uh, so it's quite a long one so i'll unpack it um, step by step um, so first thing I'm doing is I'm loading in uh, the, the data uh, from the CSV file. Uh, this line just above is saying that for every 1,000 rows in the uh, CSV file, uh, commit the transaction and open up a new one um, so it doesn't overwhelm the heap space uh, in the F4J. Uh, so like I say, all of the values that are imported in uh, using load CSV are strings by default. Uh, so I need to cast the ID on, on the row to be uh, an integer uh, before I use it to merge movie node. Uh, and then what I'm doing is I'm doing a um, mass assignment to append um, a map of properties onto the properties that already exist uh, for, the, uh, for the movie. Um, so this um, these first few lines are a shorthand. So I'm saying for everything that has a, a dot at the start of it, uh, then it will come from uh, the, the row property. So it's a shorthand way of saying that, for example, uh, overview is a row dot overview. And then there are certain pieces of information I need to cast into, uh, into particular types. So for example, the runtime, I'm converting that to a float using the to float function. Uh, the release date, I'm converting that into a native near for j date. Um, etc etc so if we scroll down a, a little bit so what i'm doing here is i'm using a uh, for each hack um, so new j doesn't have a concept of an if statement um, so the next best thing for us to do without using apoc is to um, use this uh, this for each hack so what i'm doing is using a case statement uh, to build up an array which either has one value if the predicate is true uh, or no values if the, the predicate is false uh, assigning that to a variable that I'm, I'm never going to use. So in this case, I've just used a uh, underscore. Uh, and then what this will, will do is if the uh, the predicate is true, um, the, the the statement after the pipe will be executed once. But then if the value is false, there'll be nothing to iterate over. Uh, but in this case, the original language is sometimes there, sometimes it's, it's not. Um, so what I'm doing is uh, checking for that. Because if I tried to merge on a null value, then I'd get an error inside an if j, because quite brightly you can't merge a node on a null value because the null um, property value doesn't exist uh, in the if j. But if that property does exist, then I'm merging a language uh, using the original language uh, from the row, and then merging a relationship between uh, the movie and the language to say this is the original language. So these next two lines are taking, uh, essentially converting a, uh, a string into a Boolean uh, and then saying that, uh, for example, if the video property on the row is, is true with an uppercase T, uh, then execute this statement at once. So in this case, I'm setting an additional label on the movie to say it's a video. And again, for um, adult, 
Uh, so in this case, I'm using the, the technique uh, from before to uh, take the spoken languages um, and then convert them into a uh, list of cipher maps. And then for each one of those languages, merge a, a language node. Uh, if I'm creating that node for the first time, then also set the name property uh, to be the, um, the name from the language. And then merge in um, the, that the movie is spoken in language. Uh, so that language. And again, with the, the country doing the same thing, um, the same for the uh, genres and the companies and the uh, the collections that it may belong to. So if we, for example, look for uh, the matrix, Uh, we now have that movie there. Uh, so if I double click, then I can see all the information that's been uh, stored against that movie. So the matrix is part of the matrix collection. It was produced by uh, Warner Brothers, uh, Groucho 2 Film, uh, Village Roadshow Pictures, and Silver Pictures. It was produced in the United States and produced in Australia. The original language and the spoken language uh, are both English. So it has uh, a genre of action and science fiction. And it has uh, many actors inside there. Uh, so if I look at the Matrix collection, uh, we can now see that's got also got the Matrix Reloaded and it's got Matrix Revolutions in there as well. I skipped a few steps in the import process. So if you are interested, then if you head over to the um, the GitHub project, uh, inside the data folder, there is a load.cypher script. Uh, and what this does is it creates the, uh, the, the data from scratch. So it first goes through, creates the uh, constraints that we need against all the nodes before creating the, the nodes from each file. So the, uh, the final schema will look a little bit like this. If I call db.schema.visualization. Uh, so we have the movie here in orange, uh, and then the, the sub labels of that are adult and video at the moment. So if I remove those, it should make things a little bit clearer. Uh, so we have a, a movie. Uh, that movie has uh, relationships to people, so the uh, cast for and crew for relationships. Uh, the movie is produced in a country, uh, it will have one or more genres. Uh, it's produced by uh, one or more production companies. Um, it has uh, keywords. It will belong to um, a collection or can belong to a collection. Uh, is has an original language and is spoken in a language. And also has... So that should now give us enough data to play with uh, so we can now start to build some REST APIs, which will be the focus of the next session next week. So thank you so much for sticking with me through the technical issues that we had at the start. If you have any comments or any feedback on the session so far, uh, feel free to get in touch uh, or create um, an issue if there's anything that you would like to see built um, as we progress with this project. Uh, otherwise, thanks a lot for your time and we'll see you next week.